Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I have a video of a box that I put together that is a gift box. I'm using a gorgeous collection from Knitway Collections called Abigail, and it's a digital collection, which I do have a video explaining more on digital papers if you've never worked with them. So check the description box for that. And this is probably one of my more favorite collections from them which is really hard to choose because there's so many gorgeous ones. So check them out. I also have a previous video of where I put this box together. It's a tutorial where I go through start to finish how to make a chipboard box. This exact box, as a matter of fact, that we're going to be making today. So if you're interested in that, check out the description box and I show how to put this together. So this is the actual box that I made in the previous video. I believe it is eight and a half by six and three quarters by five inches tall. And I'm gluing my pattern paper on the lid sides of the box. So I needed two pieces that are eight and an eighth by one inch and two that are six and three eighth inch by one inch. And for this, I'm using some Fabri-Tac beacon glue. This way it gives me a chance to move it around, get it exactly where I want before it adheres down. I've also prepared a lot of my papers with some double-sided tape. Um, if it's the outside of the box, I like to use double-sided tape, and I'll explain more in just a moment. And here's some of those gorgeous flowers from the collection that I did back on cardstock to make them a little bit stronger. So here I'm using my piece that's going to go on the inside of the box that is 8 and 1 8 by 6 and 3 8 inches. And again, it gives me a minute to just push, move it around if I need to, and then press it down, and it's adhered very well. Here's for the inside lid of my box. Um, again, using wet glue for this because it's just a little too hard with double-sided tape because once that sets down, you have to rip it to get it back up. But with this, you can move it around. So I'm going to press that down. And here's where I like to use some tape for the outside of the box because what I do is remove one piece of the tape backing. And this piece is 8 and 8 by four and seven eighths. You need two of them for the longer sides and then six and three eighths by four and seven eighths. Two of those for the shorter side of the box. So once I move that around, get it exactly where I want, then I can press it down, remove the other three sides of the backing and add a little bit of wet glue to the center. And that makes it really easy to get it centered where you want. But for the inside of the box, I will use all wet glue because it's a little bit harder to get to the inside of the box. So here's my finished box. It turned out beautiful. The inside bottom and the outside bottom are eight and an eighth by six and three eighths. And now I'm going to add the pattern paper to the top of the box. And this side is, size is eight and three eighths by six and three fourths. So you're going to need two of those. And like I said, I remove one piece of the tape backing. This allows me to just kind of move it around to get it exactly where I want, press that down. Then I can lift it up, remove the rest of the tape backing along with a little bit of wet glue to the inside. I'm not shy with my glue. I want to make sure it's adhered down very well. So I can just press that down, make sure it's adhered. And if any of that glue does seep out, a um, glue eraser gets rid of it very easily. So here are the mattings for the pieces um, that I cut out, which I'll put up on the screen. I did add a small black mat behind this beautiful image because I wanted it to pop. And then I added that onto that pink stripe paper. And then I gave that pink stripe paper another black mattings, again, so it pops off the page. And behind that black mat, I put the same size piece of chipboard, a medium weight chipboard behind it and also add a couple more pieces because I decided I wanted it to be quite dimensional. So I'm using wet glue to adhere all those down and as I mentioned earlier in the video I'll be sure to link Knitwit Collections. Check out their website to see they have really good prices and you get so many papers with it, so many different elements, um, different images, gorgeous images. You can also check out their YouTube channel. They go through all their new collections what comes in the collection. So here I've added my flowers that I cut from the silhouette that are in the collection. I don't show it on camera, but I do add some pop dots behind some of them. And I also adhered them down with hot glue so they adhered immediately. And when I went to put my image on, that's when I decided I wanted it a little bit more dimensional. So I just cut out a couple more pieces of scrap card uh, chipboard that I had rather and added those again with the hot glue. 
And then I finished it off with some gorgeous wild orchid craft flowers and some Crystal Nouveau drops. So I hope you finish out watching the video. I do have some detailed photos at the end and check out the description box for all the links. I also will link you to a video that I have showing how I use digital papers. If you're not familiar with them, check that out. It may answer some questions for you. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.